What's up, y'all? It's your girl Diana Garcia, and we are back. We're shaking the culture. <laughs> and I'm so oh, excited. We're gonna start this over. <laughs> Dude, go ahead and introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi, you guys. What's up? It's your girl Alexis, aka the prophetic poet, aka the makeup artist. Um, yeah, I'm here. I'm from New York, lived um, in Atlanta. So, yeah, Good to, glad to be here. Dude, I'm so excited because this is actually, like, my real friend, like, in real fucking life. Yes. Like, outside of this, like, be like, girl, what you think about this and whatnot. So, kind of, I guess, background on how we even met was, mm-hmm. she, like she said, she's a makeup artist, okay? She is the shit. And I don't let people touch my face. But when it comes to makeup, I really don't. Like, there's really just three people that could touch my face. If you're not those three people, don't touch my face. Period. Yeah, and she's one of them. Period. Like, so, play. literally. <laughs> Um, shout out to Asia because she's the one who yeah. actually made this happen, and yeah. you know, it was really like three musketeers, girl. La- I want to say like last year, the beginning of the year, like yo Asia's um, birthday shoot. Let's get her right. It was fire. nice. Yeah, it, it was, was really nice. fucking nice. Yeah, and then I'm glad we did the photos. It looks good. Camera yeah, good, girl. Everything was really nice. I was like, damn, this is life. This is it, what I'm manifesting and what I want the rest of my life to be. See, so I'll tell you. that's. That was really nice, though. I feel like we started off the year yeah. productive as fuck. It for uh, okay. Yeah, period. we came in knowing what we wanted. We came in literally like for me, I allow got to use me in in the areas of just the arts, and it's just like we all literally came together and we just meshed. Yes, we meshed. We played our part. It, period. That's it. We literally each one was the star at the moment, yeah. and I loved it. I don't know why it just came to my mind the day of your birthday shoot. And I was like, I got you. <laughs> Give me the angles. Let's do this. Let's do that. And I'm like, dude, I really love that. Because I feel like it's rare to find that female group yeah. where they actually want you to look good. And it's like, hold up, do this pose. Or like the lights hitting better over here, you yeah. know? Just have that environment where it's like, instead of just like talking about women empowerment, yeah. we're actually out there doing it in real life with our friend groups. And I love yeah. that. I feel like it's different for every friend group but our friend group specifically is just we're real we're raw we're go-getters we see the vision and we're like okay you need help what can i do exactly and we work together it's like it's the mindset it is and yeah it's the mindset it's the mindset mindset yeah and i feel like we really just see each other what like the future that we are like okay you know asia she is the stylist she is the designer she's gonna make sure you slay every single time you're gonna make sure the makeup is beat in perfection. Like, hold up, pause. Let me go fix that real quick. Hold up, her hair. You know, like, yeah. you make sure details. Like, you were fixing the pillows and stuff like that. Yeah. You're like, hold up. I check all around me. So we make sure, like, mm-hmm. things are getting done. Things are getting you done. You know? Yes. So go ahead and tell us a little bit, I guess, about, tell them a little <laughs> bit about, you know, how this came into action. Why, why makeup? Why makeup? Well, since I was younger, I literally just played in makeup all day and then started watching music, um, like videos, then started watching like makeup videos. And I just had a huge passion for one, helping people and women to understand that they're beautiful without makeup. But also, if you love makeup, makeup is just an added bonus to your confidence. It's not what makes you and my testimony is so huge with makeup because I used to hide behind makeup. So it's like now coming into like a here a healed space um and knowing like oh it's it's more than just a face it's like touching people's hearts and that's what i want to do more than anything when someone sits in my chair yeah and i love that what's the hardest thing i guess about being a makeup artist the hardest thing about being a makeup artist is um i would say what is the hardest thing that's so huge the hard, because I don't feel like there's no hard thing for me. It's just it comes naturally. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it comes naturally for me. So like, what seems hard is just a test to like push through, like color matching. I'm really good at it. Had people yeah. tell me I was really good at it, but sometimes for a makeup artist, specifically for me, like what the hardest thing is is really the easiest. So. Yeah. Okay. Nice. All right. So you're a makeup artist, but also you're creative. You know. Yeah. When did you learn to kind of give your title, give yourself both titles, not just categorizing yourself as a makeup artist, but you're like, no, I'm a creative too. I could do your makeup, and we could really get creative in whatever aspect it is. When did you decide to be like, all right, I'm actually a creative too, not just a makeup artist. Mm-hmm. When I learned, like at a very young age, when I would write poetry. 
I would write stories, films, poetry, and I would realize I realized that, oh, I could write, but then I also can do um, photography, but then I could also do this, and I can do social media, but then I could also, so seeing how much I can do made me realize, oh, I'm not just a person that has one gift, but multiple giftings, and I felt like for me, stewarding that gifting um, is important, and I learned that, like, God gives me so many gifts, not just to do it at the same time all at once, because being a multifaceted creative is crazy, but sometimes I do things all at once, and God is like, mm, relax, no, and he shows me, like, Hey, in this season, I need you to focus on makeup. In this season, I need you to focus on writing. In this season, I need you to focus on that. So that's kind of how I realized, oh, I have so many things to offer, but like I condense it down, which is super hard to do in one season. Hey, I'm focusing on this. If I have other thoughts that come of like production of other things, I'm like, let me write that down, pocket that, and let me come back maybe like two weeks after God says, okay, I'm releasing you to work on this. So, yeah. Nice. I love that. I think the one thing, um, like, I think I said at your birthday dinner, just the type of person you became and you're becoming. And so much, I've seen you grow so much, you know, and just being so confident in yourself and putting yourself out there. Like, I admire, we did the first uh, Girls Need Loving 2 event. Yeah. And you did it. And I was just like, okay, like, I was excited to see what you were going to write or what you said, because you're not the type of person to be like, oh, let me pre-write this it's just like let me talk about how i feel at the moment and it just flows so perfect yeah. that it's just like damn like <laughs> she didn't write this down like this literally just came through her and she literally just yeah. said what she had to say and it fit perfectly yeah so how does that come about when did you realize that i don't have to i guess i kind of get ready for this i just need to know the vibes and i'm there yeah so for me like i believe in jesus and i believe like he gives me gifts and one of the gifting is, is her prophecy. And for me, I know 1000%, like when I go up on stage, wherever I go, God gives me word and I just say what he wants me to say. Like, it's not even me. Like I surrender completely to what I want to say and whatever God gives me in the moment. Like somebody could be dealing with depression, anxiety. Some people can be dealing with whatever they have going on, but um, I come as a light of Jesus to share, shed light to those dark places and say, hey, I need you to heal from this. I need you to know, like, you're going through it, but you're not alone, too, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think I realized after my healing of 12 months of trauma, I learned that, oh, wait, I lost poetry completely. I didn't write anything for, like, two weeks. And I was like, man, why am I not writing? And I realized in that moment, oh, no, God is making me a new creation, a new creature in him. So in that same breath, I was like, oh, so let me just lean into the shift, into the change, and... Um, then I realized, oh, it's prophetic poetry. I just, like, I use me and I say what he wants me to say. Yeah. So you just mentioned, um, being traumatized and, um, anxiety and depression. Um, I think that's kind of how when me and you had our own little moment, we connected. We were like, girl, I'm going through it. And, um, just kind of talking about, like, our environments where we were at. We were like, damn, like, it sucks that I feel this depressed in this environment. And that's, like I said, that's feel like we're connected to the max where it's like, damn, why are we two depressed (laughs) bitches connecting on this? But we really uplifted each other at that time in our lives where we were like damn girl I'm going through it too and just like kind of hearing your story so with all that being said um kind of tell us you know the story that you told me and how I guess yeah the journey yeah so for me like and that's you mean the event the yep yeah so I am hosting an event called moments moments of expression and that's pretty much where I allow God to use my pain for purpose Because I couldn't sit too much longer in the depression and anxiety. I had to do something about it and let God, like, heal me. Um, And so it's pretty much an event where people of all walks of life um, are coming together to really just put on a moment of just song, of dance, of poetry, of painting um, and writing and just heal from their experiences so it's like you can come in one way but you're gonna leave like a totally different way yeah okay so why why did you focus on this specifically because i've I've dealt with suicide Mm -hmm. and a lot of people have dealt with suicide and 
I did it in September because it's Suicide um, Prevention Month. So I was like, well, September is about suicide. Let's do an event on suicide because so many times people, there's somebody in this world killing themselves right now because they don't feel loved. And I want to shed the light and be like, hey, I know you want to kill yourself, but that's not the way. Mm -hmm. Because I've dealt with it so many times before. It's like people need a voice. And to use their gifting as a voice is is big for me. So how did you deal with those situations at those moments? Um, So for me, I remember one time, I even said this yesterday, um, on another interview, I would, I remember like having a knife to my wrist um, when I was younger. And I just remember, um, I just remember having this big over um, this knife to my wrist and in that moment, like, I was, I just heard all these lies, all these things, all these, like, you, you're not worth it, you're never gonna be anything, like, you're never gonna make it, there's no way out of what you're going through, there's no way out of what you're facing, and yet I still believe, like, maybe there's, there's, like, I just, I don't know, I was just so in my head, and I remember, like, a, I heard a knock at the door, it was crazy, because there was nobody upstairs in the upstairs area, and I was like, ooh, I knew it was God, like, I knew it was all him, and I literally remember, like, I felt a blanket cover me, and in that same breath, I was like, ooh, like, I just fell to the ground, because I'm like, I felt like God's love, like, covering me in that moment, I just fell to my knees, and, like, so even in moments of, like, feeling like I'm not worth it, God still was like, no, I still love you, like, you still have purpose in, in what you're doing, so, Yeah. Yeah, I feel like a lot of people go through that. And especially when they first want, if anybody ever were to come across you, you're a very happy, like, let me help you. Like, what do you need done? Like, I feel like you're, you give a lot of services, you know? So nobody would ever come to realize or to think that those, those moments have happened to you. Yeah. You know? So how do you feel about that? Like when people think that you are perfect and you are good and the inside you're breaking down. Man, it feels, it used to feel annoying. It used to feel so annoying to have people around me that yet still couldn't realize or see what I was going through. And that used to frustrate me so much. But then I had to realize, one, I'm not opening my mouth. And number two, I'm afraid, I had to confess my fears of not, of just being afraid of having people around and my fear of um, being seen or being judged. So for me saying, oh, I want to take my life. So for me, it was just one of those things where it was like, I had to check myself more than anything. Yeah, I really had to check myself because I could look at look like this perfect person. Everybody can look like this, this happy-go-lucky like I was. But then it clicked for me like, no, you're not opening your mouth. People care about you. People don't like hate you or feel any ill will um, towards you. So I really had to realize, no, like, there are safe spaces. I'm just not opening up to those safe spaces because what I think is unsafe is actually safe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Explain that. So it's like certain friends that I would have, I would think they're so unsafe. Like I, f- I would feel like they're going to judge me. They're going to say this. They're going to leave. They're going to do this. They're going to do that. They're going to do this. And all these lies are coming in. I don't know if you saw Inside Out 2, yeah. but Inside Out 2 is the perfect example of anxiety. Like I would have like, you know how those people in those little cubicles were having popping negative thoughts? Yeah. That was my mind. Like I would always have negative, a uh, negative connotation toward anything and anyone that hurt me, that did something to me. And so I would base it off of past situations that happened to me. And so like like friends that were like, no, Alexis, I'm down for you. Like, I'm not going to do anything. I'm not going to say anything crazy. Like, it's just me and you. And if I have to say something crazy, I'm going to let you know. Um, but I I think it's developing a friendship and just saying, hey, I'm sad. And then me seeing how they would react and they would come with so much love and encouragement. And I'd be like, oh, I just had to open up my mouth. Yeah. 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 So how long do you think or how long did it take you to be like, okay, let me open up my mouth. Um, two years ago. Two years ago. Mhm. Two years ago, and it's still an ongoing like journey. You still have to say, okay, no, yeah, I'm not gonna entertain anything that's not positive or not the word of God. So it's like for me, I had to be like, mm. A, a negative thought come, I have to take that thought captive and say, no, you have the mind of Christ. Nope, you're not gonna think like that because if you start thinking like that, then you're gonna have a, a line of fifty things that you're going to think about that could potentially go wrong with the thing. Like even the event, I wasn't going to do it, but God was like, 
it's this year it's not next year yeah it's this year yeah yeah i remember we you kind of um i don't remember if it was this event in particular yeah. the last year where we were talking about me you and asia we're like okay this is we're gonna do it and you know um like i said we had our moment where we kind of separated because we we're all doing our own yeah. things we were just so busy and stuff like that so now to hear that you're actually doing it and it's like it's real. It's real. like we have a month and times and like shit just got real. You it know, got real. I'm like literally so proud of you because like you said, yeah. you're not waiting until next year. Like this is the year. No matter if shit takes a left turn, like every fucking thing in life does. Yeah. You know, like I'm proud. I'm so proud. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Yeah, it's it's always just saying I'm going to get up and do it. No matter what it looks like, no matter what it feels like. You could have $2 in your bank account. But at the same time, it's like if you got to go, if you got to dream, it, it doesn't – time waits for nobody. So you got to keep pushing and knowing when to sit down and rest because sometimes that was one of my struggles, like knowing when to rest. So Yeah, I yeah. think like that's everybody because I feel like we live in a world where it's like you have to grind. You can't sleep or rest. Like if you're not grinding, you're not doing it right or you're not going to get to your – end point mm -hmm. you know or your end goal yeah. of things but sometimes it's like all right once you get your end goal now you're all burned out it, then wait then what you're not gonna have the energy to enjoy what you just produced for the past however months yeah 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 so yeah. To, can we get a little bit more of what are we gonna get at the event is there any type of um things we're gonna do is there panels speakers what is what are the vibes that day so I'm still putting all of like the speakers together and stuff, but um, for the day, I'm definitely going to have a station where you're going to write, whether it's like writing a note to yourself, whether it's going to be you writing an encouraging message or word um, or the first word that pops into your head or a note to your sister, auntie, cousin, grandma, somebody, and they're going to put it on this little light wall. That's one of my favorite things that I can't wait to, to have at, at the event. It's going to be a little cute little white, um, light wall, and y'all just could pin y'all's um, envelopes to the little white wall, uh, the little light wall, and yeah. That's the biggest thing because I think, like, we think how can we get out what we have in our head and our hearts if we're not just releasing it. And one way to get things out is to write it down for me so I think that's helped with other people because journal journaling yeah journaling yeah journaling is your yeah. thing <laughs> yeah. it used to never be my thing yeah. I used to hate it but now I'm like okay I like it yeah I feel like yeah. the older we get because I used to be the same thing like everything yeah. was on my phone but now yeah. it just feels good to write everything down like if I'm feeling mm -hmm. some type of way about something I just write it down and then like burn it or throw it away and stuff that's like perfect. that or like if you're pissed off at somebody you're just like oh this bitch <laughs> just write down or whatever the motion is or the feelings are at that moment it's yeah. just it feels good just to literally let it all out on a piece of paper mm -hmm. and it's gone yeah I think that's like that's a real thing like releasing it and just letting it go because sometimes it could still be in your heart and your mind um, if even if you're like, oh, I don't care, yeah, we, it's like we still care, yeah, because it's obviously instilled in your mind somewhere, yeah. yeah. So I love that. I um I was looking at your TikToks, and of course I see your TikToks, you know, and I love how your person you can see your personality. You yeah. know, if people want to know who you are, yeah. just go on TikTok and you'll see it. <laughs> like her personality is there. You've been so transparent on yeah. TikTok, and I love that. And I feel like you've been growing in your space a lot. And like I said, seeing you in Asia, just doing your thing and being vulnerable and, like, really posting and showing, showcasing what you guys have a love for, it's so inspiring. So yeah. it's just like, damn, like, yeah. look at her. She's literally, like, not hiding and actually speaking up. Yeah. And a lot of people could relate to that. Yeah, even you too. Like I'm literally proud. Like literally proud of you too. Like so for it because, girl, you're doing it. No matter what it looks like, it could look crazy. But you're like, I gotta still go. I gotta keep going. Sadly, so it's like, and it's gonna blow up. Yeah. You just gotta keep like, not allowing what's around you to drain, what's going on inside. And same for me. Like, yeah. you know, we can let what's going on outside. Um drain us to where we're like i don't even want to do it but it's like no like you gotta do it you do because who else 
literally who else because even if somebody else tries to do what you're doing exactly they're not you no so it's never gonna be the same so girl this is it this is your baby hey. no literally i'm just like <laughs> guys don't play about my child that's my child exactly so, yeah no i feel that yeah no. all right so we're gonna ask a couple questions quick questions trying to get to know you a yeah. little bit better simple questions okay all right when's your birthday my birthday is march 22nd I know we're March babies. Yeah, March babies. For yeah. Sure. Um. Let's see. Um. Uh, what's your favorite color? Favorite color is mauve. So that's pink and purple together. If I didn't know, it's, <laughs> it's people are like you so like ratchet. And I'm like no, it's just mauve. It's just yeah. You're so bougie. This is <laughs> no, a proper no. word. You yeah. so bougie because everybody says like, yeah, black, white, yellow, purple, blue. blue. You know. Yeah. yeah. So I'm it's saying, unique. <laughs> right. No. Exactly. All right. Is there a favorite makeup tool that you go to? Makeup tool, no, but the foundation that I go to, which I'm so sad they discontinued, was is Urban Decay Stay Naked. But they have a new foundation that I really want to try, so I'll be trying that soon. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll be on TikTok <laughs> trying to see if you try it or not. Look, yeah, we'll see, we'll see, the, we'll see what you get them. All right, is there a favorite food you will eat for the rest of your life? Hibachi, okay. I, I would have never expected I that. I love hibachi. Really? Yes. Or Italian. Like I was thinking yeah. like pasta, like yeah. definitely Italian for sure. Definitely pasta too. Yeah. 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 Kill you. All right. And then is there a favorite movie you have on replay or you'll watch? No. I love yeah. Love and Basketball. That's one thing I always go back to. Love and Basketball. basketball. That is a really good movie though. Yeah. I don't blame you at all. It is. It's fire for real. But it's long, and I'd be like, I'd be skipping parts. Girl, what? <laughs> I've watched it so many times. times. Yeah, I, I just, just like, usually have it like a background noise because it's just like a classic, yeah. you know? So it's it just, is. Yeah. And so. basketball, like, I love basketball. Really? Yeah. Did you ever play sports when you were younger? Girl, no. I <gasps> tried to do te um tennis, oh, not tennis, um track, but then I was like, absolutely not. <laughs> this is not for me. So I did marching band, but that was it really yeah i don't know why i would think like oh maybe yeah. i see her playing basketball or something since she's at a basketball because you are pretty no. tall yeah well i come from a basketball family like my brother played basketball my my family but yeah me no mm -mm. i i stick to music yeah, yeah. see so, yeah, okay and so that was my next question favorite um artist at the moment oh i don't even have a favorite artist okay his name is, he's a christian artist though but his name is sunday s-o-n-d-a-e okay yeah. You just put us on. We'll definitely go check them out. After yeah. This. Yeah. All right. And then when you hear Shaking the Culture, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? I hear music. Music? Like, you're really standing on business for real with this music stuff. So it's like, yeah, I hear music. Yeah. It's a unique. This platform is a unique way of creating a voice and a sound like no other. Mm. So, yeah. We'll That's that. the first. Yeah. Yeah. It's different. Yeah, I definitely see that. I feel like a lot of people wanted me to manage them. I don't manage, art, manage artists because yeah. they're like taking care of kids. It's a lot. It's a lot. A lot. Learn my lesson. Yeah, yeah, it's a lot. But I love the music industry, not really. But, you know, I'm here for like the end product of yeah. like the artists and like the concerts and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I could have like I have a bunch of like friends that are um, yeah. artists yeah. and stuff like that. Like my boyfriend is an artist, too. So it's just kind of yeah. like oh music it's you know? a lot but yeah. you're still in this space yeah know? exactly but because i love music like yeah. i love music Girl. so it's like it's a love and hate relationship with you you know i feel like yeah. with everything it is it is life yeah 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 definitely all right so where can we help you so okay do you have a link for this event yes so, so tell us about that the link is gonna be out on july 1st um but i do have a donation link for people to donate like if they feel led to like donate towards the event because it's just me doing this my first one um so yeah the funds go to literally just my the artist of the night crew so photography videography all that stuff and then um like food drinks stuff like that like materials for the event so yeah but then it will be on eventbrite it's called moments of um expression so it will be on eventbrite um, and it'll also be on my Instagram, which is I am Alexis Riva I V A. So yeah. perfect, yeah. So there you guys got it. Um, everything will be scripted. Wow, everything will be in the link below to make it easier for you guys. So just check anything out. Um, down I'll say downstairs. Wow, in the Girl, link below. Look, no, literally, but it's okay. This is the last one of the day. So it's good. <laughs>
<laughs> but what's it called? But yes, so like I said, everything will be in the description mm-hmm. box. Um, her IG on social media will be on the description box description box as well yeah. um and yeah i can't wait to see how this event goes out of course you were gonna be there is there a specific date for september 1st so september 14th is the event from 7 to 9 30 okay um, perfect yeah but in july july 1st is when i'm gonna be releasing the event right yeah perfect perfect and then also um september first is the shaking the culture festival so right after that we'll be going to your event like it's just aligned event after see? event it always does it just works out every single time it works out i'm excited to have y'all yeah. i'm excited to have you coming it's gonna I be amazing am. i know yeah it's you it's gonna be wild it. so <laughs> yes i believe it's gonna be amazing so yeah yeah i'm excited i'm excited for the experience and for more to come because yeah. this better not be your last oh first, absolutely nor not. your last one no nope. you throw i definitely want to travel doing this so we'll see you should yeah you definitely should we're here for the support, you know. We we try to be global, too. Yeah. And whatnot. We'll be in, we'll be in Virginia next month, so that'll be fun. That's gonna be See, fun. Yeah. First time I'm in Virginia, so I'm excited for Virginia. Yeah. So yeah, That's but really interesting. Well, yeah. definitely interesting <laughs> for sure. Content, content, content. <laughs> exactly. I'm gonna be like you. I'm gonna have three phones at the end of the day. You, Look, a second one for all this. I'm like, oof. Okay. Content, exactly. As yeah. you should though, because you're serious about your shit. As exactly. you should. You know. Yeah. All right. So go ahead and tell us your social media, your TikTok, um, and then like, give us the link one more time. Okay. So the Eventbrite link would be. It's called Moment of Expression. My Instagram is I am Alexis Riva, and my TikTok is Alexis L R underscore. So there you go. All right, thank you so much for your time and your energy, and thank you for having me. Of course. Yeah. All right, bye guys.